Today we're going to discuss the dangers of fentanyl. If you watch Wave 3 News, and we appreciate that you do that, you probably hear a lot of things about fentanyl and the dangers of. With me now, because it is Family Law Friday, is Attorney John Schmidt. And John, I have to be honest with you, when I, when I think fentanyl, I don't think family law. Sure. So, so tell me how that affects your practice. Sure. Well, um, so we deal with families, parents and kids, and this is a danger you don't come back from usually. So uh, I did have a case, for example, this morning where my client uh, had overdosed on fentanyl, lost her child as a result. Um, they were able to bring her back. Um, but more importantly, this is kind of a public service announcement. So um, I was blessed enough um, to have this encounter and, um, and found out what you know, the family's gone through. So I really think it's important for that to get out. I think it's important for people to hear it. And uh, I happen to have this time. So I am actually giving this time over so that the public becomes more aware of the reality of the situation and that it is real. It's not just something you hear on the news. It's not just something that you hear people talk about, the, the epidemic, but rather it, it hits us and hits us in our community uh, and with that said, yes, I'm going to turn the show over to you guys <laughs> and uh, let you guys do your thing. This is uh, Sabrina Reagans. And first of all, Sabrina, thank you for having the courage to come on here and tell your story because it does take courage. But as you said, and you and I discussed, you can help others by doing so. So tell me a little bit about your personal story. Um, my, my daughter, Sunny, passed away uh, May 21st of this year, four months ago. Today would be her 23rd birthday. Uh, she passed away unexpectedly. Uh, she had gone on an overnight with her, her boyfriend to an Airbnb, uh, and he called me at 7.29 in the morning on a Saturday to, uh, she was unresponsive, CPR for, for 10 minutes until, uh, until EMS got there, and uh, they were unable to revive her. Uh, I waited a few weeks for the autopsy because it didn't make any sense to us. Um, and what they found in her system was uh, not a drug laced with fentanyl, but pure fentanyl. It was a well above lethal, as many times over the lethal limit of what it would take with fentanyl to kill her. And uh, there was no other drug in, in her bloodstream. It was pure fentanyl. So uh, that's what we've been dealing with. Wow. Um... You're losing your daughter, Sonny, makes this so personal, and I'm sure you've researched this and probably know much more than I'll ever know about fentanyl. And by the way, beautiful, beautiful daughter. Yes. So yes. with that being said, when you heard about this and the circumstances that are involved here, do you know who supplied the fentanyl? I think that's a question that a lot of people would like to wonder is like, where is this coming from? And that, that's one of the reasons I'm here. I do. I know exactly who supplied um, uh, what she had gotten that week. I know uh, where and how, um, and so does the, so did the police. The prescription drug task force did meet with me and Sonny's father, uh, and we handed over all the evidence, and it was very irrefutable. And uh, but uh, it is a it is a process that we are still working through because uh, I don't believe that uh, the, the the task force is very uh, limited in how many people are available to to work on these things, and they. In Louisville and in Kentucky, they have a, a very large quantity of these type of things happening. Um, I do know that it has become very common in Louisville for, um, and I'm sure throughout the United States, but specifically in Kentucky, uh, that certain drugs are being pressed uh, with, because fentanyl is so much cheaper and easier to get. It's synthetic morphine. It gives you the same high as a heroin, basically, or better, I should say. Uh, it's being pressed in garages uh, with pill pressers that look and make it look the same shape as a Xanax, for example, with the same uh, with the same markings on it, the whole thing. Uh, they, so they can uh, heroin or any other drugs grind it up. They can make whatever it is look like fentanyl. And most kids today, from my understanding and the research I've done, they, they know when they're buying if they are habitual buyers that what they're buying is uh, most likely uh, in, in 90 percent probability, if not higher, that there is some fentanyl in what they're buying. They take that risk, uh, which is just stupid, of course. Uh, I don't think they're as aware that they could be get, just getting straight fentanyl and, and not what they think they're getting, which is what happened to my daughter, which is why I don't deem it in any way, shape, or form an overdose. Um, it's, to me, that's a homicide. Now, we can't, obviously, legal terms can't do that because you have to show intent, but it is a homicide. 
I'm, I'm not I'm not going to disagree with you and and because you know I can't imagine losing your daughter and how, how you've been emotionally affected with that being said and I think I know the answer to this but I want to hear it from you do you feel like justice has been served do you think enough has been done to get to the bottom of the fentanyl problem and your personal loss of your daughter well I think it's an, uh, obviously not because I'm a mom and moms want we you know we're the will never justice will never be satisfied unless I can have my daughter back right now uh, but in terms of, of, of getting the fentanyl problem under control and and taking care of that, no, I don't. And it's I don't blame the police or the or the drug task force or the DEA or anybody. They they are doing what they can, I believe, to get who's bringing it into the states, um, who's bringing it in from Mexico or from wherever they're they're getting it and and bringing it in. And, and I think they've done, especially lately, they've had some pretty big uh, bust. But on the street level, they're not going after those guys. And that's the problem, because if you don't go after those guys, then those guys aren't afraid to sell whatever's being given to them. And they're not testing it to see if it's what they think they're getting um, from the, whoever is is bringing it into the state. And that's, I think, something that, that needs to be done. Wow. I, again, thank you for your courage for coming on. I know this is very emotional for you. It is. It's hard for me to talk to someone who is feeling what you're feeling, because as a parent, I'm going, my God, if I lost one of my sons, I cannot imagine. But you're doing the right thing. You're helping others, raising awareness. John, what can we do? What can you do as an attorney? And what can we do as the general public in, in helping stop this, this fentanyl epidemic that's going on? What can we do? Honest to God, I don't know. The, um, <clears throat> you know, I tell my kids, no, don't take a pill that anybody gives you, right? And I think in this case, um, and you correct me if I'm wrong, Sabrina, but she wasn't planning on taking an illegal substance. She thought she was taking a relaxer and it ended up being... We, we don't know, and I, I don't want to get into specifics, but uh, she, we believe it was most likely just from nothing being found on scene whatsoever, um, uh, likely Xanax, uh, but I can't say that for certain, sure. um, and, and it may be something different. Uh, regardless, though, uh, I think the kids, now that all we hear about is fentanyl in the news, I think they know. I think what we need to do, though, is make sure they know it can be not just a little laced in there because they think, oh, well, that'll just give you a high, that's what they're hearing. No, this can be pure fentanyl, and even a tiny little bit will kill you. I've heard, I've heard it's enough to where if a police officer gets too close to someone who's overdosed on fentanyl, that they can actually ingest it through their nasal passages, and it can kill them. That, I that mean, is that's how little it takes. That's exactly right. There's oh. nothing wrong with that. And I think that moms and the parents and the family of the people who are dealing with what I'm dealing with are probably the best resources for the police. We are literally making it the easiest job in the world because we can usually access that information on where they're buying it. We, we talk to their friends, we see their cell phones, we get their text messages and their Snapchats, can see what's happening and can pass that along. So use us as a resource. Wow, you know what I want you to do now with this remaining time because I think this may be healing for you. This may be therapeutic for you. Talk a little bit about your daughter. Talk about Sunny, how special she was. I don't know how much time you have. Well, t take a minute and, j and just some of her attributes because I think, you know, there's a lot of love and I think it's, it's good to express that because I think it hits home with people when you talk in a personal way. Well, my daughter uh, walked at nine months and read Shakespeare at three and a half. She uh, was a voracious reader. She read everything and then some. She, uh, she left behind uh, not just me and her father and her brother, who miss her dearly, but also her now four-year-old daughter, Stella, who is the light of my life and her father and stepmother's life as well, and uh, our entire families are coming together to make sure she knows she's so loved. My daughter was uh, the most clever, quick-witted person you've, anybody has ever met, and funny. Everybody will say how funny she is, and as you said, absolutely gorgeous, but inside and out. Wow. Wow. Mom, thank you. John, thank you for taking this time to raise awareness about the dangers of fentanyl. I, I have been educated, in a, and this is in a very personal way, which I think is what it's going to take to make a difference, for people to feel it. I think it's right. And you really helped with that. Again, Sabrina, thank you. John, thank you. You're welcome, John. All right. Yeah, Attorney yeah. John Schmidt, if you have any issues that involve family law or something like this with a, a fentanyl case, uh, divorce, of course, custody, he can help you with adoptions. Um, that is what Family Law Friday is all about. Today was a very special edition, thanks to Sabrina. Okay, we'll take a little break here. And then coming up on a much lighter note, it is a football weekend. We'll talk about T.